Thank you for listening to Mailbox Money, your guided tour through safe, sacred, and speculative investing with a plan and a purpose to do more good with newfound peace of mind. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Mailbox Money. My name is Jackson Wood, joined by my partner, Ryan Kruger. In today's episode, we are going to talk about what we call mailbox math. In this episode, mailbox math, the the entire theme of today's episode, really focuses in on what is most important to us as investors, as financial planners. It's the holy grail of basically everything that we do. Um, Not to turn anybody off by using the word math, but the entire idea here is so powerful, it gets us excited, it gets all of our nerdiest investment friends excited. And it came about because Ryan spent his career, or the first part of his career, in the belly of the beast in the world's largest bank and brokerage firm. And I spent the first part of my career uh, inside at my desk, the largest retirement plan sponsor company in the world. And what came across our desks and what we saw all day, every day, were very complex, sophisticated, PhD-backed, research-backed investment portfolios that were then sent out to clients to hopefully help them be able to achieve their freedom day or have financial freedom at some point in their life. And these tools and these models were complicated. I spent way too many hours of my life reading through sometimes 50 or 100 page proposals and plans. What we learned independently is that there's a much more simple yet sophisticated way to structure portfolios and to structure your money in order to achieve what we call mailbox math and what ultimately leads to financial freedom and financial independence. And that's the essence of what we do, the essence of everything that we do for our clients. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a few points. Uh, we're going to talk about Yogi Bear math. So all of our baseball fans uh, will certainly appreciate this. There's a link I'm going to post to a very powerful um, article that Ryan wrote on our website, specific to Yogi Bear, so we can kind of attract some of the sports fans. We're going to talk about uh, what we call pancakes and pivots, a story of one of our clients and dear friends finding uh, financial freedom, his freedom day through a very unconventional uh, approach, some, some investment not typically associated with income or dividends. We're going to talk about bank yourself. We're going to talk about the idea of being actively passive in your investment portfolio. And then we're going to bump it, bump through that with a couple of stories a big shout out to one of the stories we're going to talk about, Warren Buffett, 92nd birthday. Uh, one of my all-time favorite stories in my life. Um, it's going to be a good episode, I'll tell you that. We'll start right there because you, you, your yield on cost, one of your favorite examples as he's slurping down Cokes for his birthday at 92, proving the peace of mind to eat and drink whatever he wants to do. Um, you know, we were talking before the show. Just to frame it, and then we're going to break it down with some real-life examples that are much more accessible than old Warren. Um, But but share that math and define, because it's one of the things that brought you and I together, is like, could this be done more simply as we were each those career paths, thankfully, united? um, And the back of an envelope and a pencil, I'm going to suggest, is all you need to turn upside down the most complicated retirement planning tools and calculators being sold by an industry that manufactures confusion. And we learned it and we escaped it so we can share these simpler truths. So so share share with the fine folks that simple math to start off and how you define it. There may be a day that Warren Buffett enjoys more than his birthday. uh, And that's probably dividend day from Coke. So rewinding time, um, Warren Buffett, through his company, invested $1.299 billion into Coca-Cola. So they bought, you know, a significant stake of Coke, the company, uh, back, I I think the year was 98. I'll have to double check that, but it was a while ago. And the quarterly dividend that 
Buffett received is approximately, you know, give or take a little bit here, $168 million per quarter. So when you annualize that, it's $672 million in dividends that Buffett receives every year on his original $1.29 billion investment into Coca-Cola. So if you add the dividends up, it's a 57% yield on cost of his original investment. So that's what we call mailbox math. Every year, Buffett, assuming no change in the dividend, you know us, we like dividend growth. Uh, he receives 57% of his original investment or his original cost back in the form of a dividend. And that's going to continue to grow as the company performs. And so that idea, although it's extreme in a 57% yield on cost or 57% mailbox math, that is what we consider the holy grail of investing. And that's what we set up and look for this concept of dividend growth in every one of the investments that we make inside of our strategy or in our client accounts. And to me, that's just such a powerful example. And it's probably reason for Warren to celebrate uh, more than his birthday because that was a tremendous investment. It took some time to get there, right? He didn't start off, which is one thing I think is important to talk about. He didn't start off receiving a 57% yield on cost the year after he made the investment. He set this up knowing this was a good fundamental purchase, good fundamental investment. This is going to pay me tremendous dividends down the road. And so when we look at and put that into context of uh, portfolio allocation and investing for the future, it may start out at a lower yield, given enough time, given enough reinvestment, additions to the portfolio, uh, compounding in the portfolio, your yield on cost can be phenomenal, much better than the PhD recommendations of a safe withdrawal rate of X percent, which you know we talked about in the previous episode was 3%. Now they've uh, boiled that down because of inflation and whatnot to 1.5%. So this is the math that really stood out to Ryan and I. And the reason that we kind of came together, and I don't think there's a better example that I've heard of, one, I love Warren Buffett, and, you know, don't tell anybody this, but I do like to drink an occasional Diet Coke. Our, our good friend on Twitter and in real life, Dividend Growth Investor, celebrated with 92 facts about Warren Buffett. You should check it out. Um, we, we share a lot in common. My favorite is his simple humility. I think that's one of the secret ingredients to achieving any of what we're about to talk about because it's not the millions or the billions. It's not this race. It's not the stock picks to get and have as much money as that guy. When we say the holy grail of simple planning, it's to be able to elbow your partner and say, hey, with the back of an envelope and a pencil, if we save this much, if the dividends grow at this rate, we're going to talk about how we do that here today. Look at each other and say, this percentage, the mailbox math, the percentage that pays us while we sleep, no matter what the market does, if it goes nowhere for 10 or 20 years, which has happened and will happen, can we live off that rising income stream and do everything we want? I will put that plan up against any projection because it's real. You can hold it in your hand to know it's real. So the more, the better example, I'll, I'm, you, get, you got the big advantage with, with Buffett and his big numbers. I'm going to start off with this little five foot something Yogi Berra that make it more real and accessible to everybody and to prove the mailbox math back of an envelope for your own numbers. So I use this to keep in mind Anytime somebody wonders, why should I be saving into the market? Why should I stay in the market? What do you think of the market? So he batted 285. That was his career average. Most people don't know that. They know the fancy quotes. They think he's kind of funny. And actually, the man went to 19 World Series. So he was doing something right. He won 13 of them. The greatest all-time team sports winning record ever. Um. Of all the quotes, the one that sticks out to me for this episode is he said, you don't have to swing hard to hit a home run. If you get the timing right, it'll go. So if there's one thing I hope anybody could take away from this and apply it in their own plan, the 285 average. If all you do is start with a 2%
dividend yield. If it is growing at 8% per year, if you are willing to wait at all, let's just say you have even less than a decade before you can need to or want to stop working. So I'm going to use eight years to make this simple. Two, eight, five, stick. 2% dividend yield. The dividend's growing at 8% per year. In eight years of reinvesting those dividends, because you don't need to eat on them yet, at the end of that simple plan that requires a pencil in the back of an envelope, you are living on a 5% yield on your original cost from the dividend growth alone. Two, eight, five. That is conservative math in our opinion. We, we run a portfolio that has dividend growth well in excess of 8% and some yielders starting more than 2%. But wherever it is, higher or lower, you can do the same exact math. We're actually gonna have a mailbox math calculator included and a website and a Freedom Day score that our coding team is working on to make this simple. Because I think I don't think this is accessible enough. It's the simplest math, and yet it's actually hard to find. If somebody wanted to go do this on their own, we're going to share it. I mean, it is the backbone of our playbook that we build safe, sacred, and speculative investments all around this simple math. But with that one envelope and a pencil on your own portfolio, if you can do your version of 285 math, you have just exceeded every safe withdrawal rate debate, article, blog post, and more importantly, all of the time to not be distracted by them for the rest of your life. The gift of deeply informed simplicity. So I just wanted to start there in case that simple math, which gets a lot more fun when it gets even more aggressive, but that discipline can unlock some of those doors to go see some of those opportunities. And we'll talk about a few that, that we've learned from and that stood out to us. So one quick thing that I noticed, two quick things. The first one is we, you didn't mention any sort of market appreciation, right? So that is important to know because a lot of the planning that I have seen in books I have read will look back at averages over 15 years and you should get this if this cooperates. 285, that back of the envelope map is not accounting for any market appreciation, which is a very conservative starting point. We don't want to be surprised on the downside. So that, that was really powerful. And then if you think about this in the context of a portfolio, if you have a 5% original yield on cost from dividends, and everybody knows that after listening to episodes here, we like dividends from free cash flow and as small a percentage of that free cash flow as we can find. You're no, you now understand that the money you have invested in companies is paying you a 5% or greater yield on cost from companies that are still being aggressive to grow their top line. They're paying the dividend out from free cash flow, which means before they ever gave you that mailbox money, they are growing their operation, investing in R&D, mergers and acquisitions are all happening, designed to further increase the dividend from free cash flow in the future. So that's a very conservative starting point and something that I think is particularly important to understand when things aren't always blue skies and rainbows, right? I guess maybe blue skies and rainbows is contradictory, but when it's not just all incredible economic conditions or market growth rates or whatever, you can look at your envelope and say, we're in a very stable, comfortable position, regardless of what happens to the weather or the market. The, to continue the, the common secret ingredient here that goes along with it, this math is so easy and wonderful and game-changing and plan and industry disrupting. Why don't more people use it? Um, I, I will admit it took me a little while. And the secret ingredient is humility. I, my favorite real-life example that comes to mind that we did a deep dive on the website from inside the belly of the beast of the tip of the spear, uh, or in this case, it was the tip of a spatula because it was Pancake House in Silicon Valley, literally the week of the tippy top of the bubble, this young Wall Street portfolio manager flew from Houston and sat, I'd never been to Silicon Valley before. I didn't know what I'm supposed to wear. 
I was a little bit nervous. I was sitting with the founder of a very successful semiconductor company who had been referred to me because I was told he might want to diversify and take some chips off the table. A long, wonderful story short that you can certainly read on our website. And by the way, as always, with every episode, we're opening our playbook, we're talking our book, everything we're talking about, all the holdings. It's not an account style, it's not a product. We have separate accounts fully transparent fund holdings. We can't mention the fund by name, but you can find all of it on our website or right here. We're transparent. Um, we wanted to leave Wall Street to remove all those layers. Um, we own this gentleman's company to this day. Um, I didn't know that back 20 years ago when it was a high-flying technology stock. And the last thing in the world he or I would have thought about was dividends from that particular company. He wanted safe dividends from other companies, and he knew that was my focus. So he wanted to take chips off the table. He was invoking his own cell discipline. That humility is the key to everybody's plan, no matter where they're starting from, in my opinion. I've just seen it. And there was no question. There was no, if I'll wait, if I got a tax problem, if I sell this year. It's like, no, enough. And his, his real mastery that I've come to appreciate from, from the best in every business was he didn't really want to agonize over the sectors and, and how I was balanced and which dividends. And we did a great job for him, but that wasn't the story. The story was he really wanted to get back to work with more peace of mind. He didn't want to stop. And the company went on a phenomenal success, as did he. And I, our, our mutual, one of our mutual heroes, Jocko Wilnick, saying discipline equals freedom. It's not a contradiction. It's an equation. So because he wanted to de-risk is the way Wall Street would call that move, he actually unlocked more doors for more upside. So that high-flying technology company that he wanted to de-risk from is now, if you just look back 10 years ago, as our friend Howard Frazier pointed out to us recently, um, another dividend growth convert from the very, very sophisticated, highly successful futures business, the most complicated instruments and ingredients on Wall Street is like mailbox math changed my perspective on all this as it did for you and I. He said, you know, 10 years ago, if you'd simply bought shares, the yield on that cost today is 50% and rising no matter what tech market valuations are, what the stock market does macro events, Federal Reserve, 50% and rising. That's an extreme example, but it's used to point out, the, to me, the most valuable dividend of all that is all the other market questions of what to do and how to react are completely distractions at this point. Good luck trying to pry out of your hands something that is yielding you 50% per year and rising so that very soon, or actually, if you just go back a few more years, I didn't want to cherry pick it and make it 100%, you're actually getting your entire cost basis, the entire price of the stock returned to you every single year in the form of dividend. So you don't have to speculate, you're not predicting, you're actually holding it in your hand and know something is real. That mailbox math is very, very compelling. And it's not just from traditional high yielding, boring dividend, sectors where we find, and in that particular case, subtle changes where companies are creating more free cash flow than they can use. The, one of the arguments against dividends is companies should have better places to invest their cash. Well, what if they do and they still have free cash flow left over after R&D, after buybacks, and they return it to stakeholders? Um, they're not boring. They can be found in all sectors. By rule, you and I believe in owning every single one of the sectors. Most people don't think of technology stocks as dividend growth stories. Some of them are changing right now because of the free cash flow piling up. I think that that's an incredible story. And I, I'm glad that your math, going back a few more years from the original 10, beats my Warren Buffett math at 57% yield on cost. But one thing that I did want to say is like, you don't have to be an executive at one of these companies or Warren Buffett in order to find and unlock the power of dividend growth. The best thing about the modern investment world 
is that this is accessible with no minimums. Um, you don't have to have 250,000 liquid to get started. I started this in my kids' accounts and there's not a whole lot of money in those kids' accounts, but it, I get excited and I want to put money into those accounts because if you think about the compounding returns and the dividend, the future yield on cost that a portfolio starting from nothing can turn into with a little bit of discipline, a little bit of humility, and a little bit of waiting as you enjoy life, you have unlocked future income that will be very, very beneficial regardless of your expenses or the lifestyle that you live is just adding to it. And to me, that's such a powerful example. And, and it's not one other thing that I did want to say really quickly is that, that you hit on these dividends and the direction of the dividends can come from very, very surprising sectors of the market. So historically or traditionally, when people think of dividends, you know, they may think of, you know, boring old companies that won't go anywhere or that have been around for a long time. But the, the math actually can get very exciting in industries that may not have a yield high enough now to attract the income seekers. But if you look at the change in the dividend rate, that's going to clue you into the company is doing something exciting. Tech is a good example. So I, I, to, to drive home your point of simplicity and starting anywhere, and not for simple sake, because the most sophisticated and the two guys you're listening to right now still start and end with the same idea. But the easiest way to start and to prove your point is I use the bank yourself example of if all you did was try to figure out whenever a giant crowd that had to keep going back to the counter, especially if they were confused or disappointed or pound the table, um, that <laughs> they weren't getting enough of the cut, as often happens with bank customers with interest rates. Um, if all you do is figure out a way to get on the other side of the counter, um, if you don't have enough to start a bank, you're not a high-flying semiconductor designer, technology executive, what if you just considered owning a stake in the bank while the savers are being paid a tiny fraction of the interest that you would then keep that fat middle profit margin to yourself? as a stakeholder. That, that is the beautiful thing about dividends and the stock market being open to everyone. I, I think it is rigged for the little guy to be able to employ all of these banks to use this one very unpopular example, right? They're, they're cheap. They haven't done anything in a long time. Nobody talks about financial sectors. They've underperformed. If all you did was say, all right, I'm getting, and I'll use myself as an example, and we did a very colorful deep dive, and I was actually asked to leave um, because I was taking a picture of the suckers, um, actual suckers. That, that's what we call them in Texas. I don't know, what, what they're not the lollipops, but you, I, when, I, when I was a kid, I would grab a sucker out of the bowl, and now with my kids that I'm setting up a bank account for, the suckers are still there, and they wondered why I took a picture. Go to freedomdaysolutions.com, and you'll see why I took a picture of those suckers, don't be one, is one of the other morals. So instead of getting a 0.04% on the savings account like I did, if I own this bank, instead of being frustrated and hoping they change, um, I would rather just benefit from the higher interest that I know they're earning on my money and cut out the middleman. So by owning shares of those banks, let's just use this same simple, if you have any version of patience and humility, and a lot of people have a lot more than 10 years to plan and save into, but you are now getting a 10% mailbox math or yield on cost of those original shares purchased 10 years ago. And again, that's not including one penny of appreciation or needing one bit of predictions or production projections from me for a plan. 10% mailbox math getting on the other side of that counter. I love the idea of being on the other side of the counter. And for this last one, uh, it is no secret. If you've read any finance or followed anything, that passive investing has taken the world by storm. And I think it's been a good thing, right? Cutting Wall Street off, uh, lowering fees, you know, encouraging good behavior. But this next example um, 
opened my eyes in a way that nothing else has ever opened them. And, and it's the textbook definition of being on the other side of the counter. Um, well, and they, and, and, you know, the history nerd to me, they, part of their business was actually publishing textbooks and, and talk about secrets hiding in plain sight all around us. I guess the one thing most folks in our industry are convinced of and investors frustrated by, you can't beat the S&P. Or you've got a couple of rainmakers and home run hitters that Yogi would have recommended against betting it all that they can because they have a unique strategy. And this debate on both sides and the crowds going wild and confusion and all the podcasts and blog posts right in the middle feeding the crowds what they want. And I hope this this is an antidote to all that confusion with more simplicity instead. So I just dial it back just a little bit. Um, and it was 18... 60, when old Mr. Poor, real name, published his first tip for investors on the railroad industry, and another secret, find some industries that stand the test of time, the game unchangers, and you will probably find Jackson Wood and I nearby with a stake already in the ground. A few years later, 1916, Mr. Poor's company offered the first I'm going to call it betting tip. Some people call it credit rating uh, for investors to then start using. And they could, the bettors would line up on either side, stocks, bonds, and all these debates. And for three centuries, offering ratings, tips to all the bettors, I would suggest, if you forget everything else about all this, if there's any tip I have is whenever you can, even better than get on the other side of the counter, be the house. <laughs> so that rating agency that everybody's convinced nobody can beat one of its products, the S&P 500, they collect licensing fees from all these different <laughs> betting parlors and shops, whether it's baskets or act. I believe active management is not about trading. It's about homework. It's about selection. It's about saying 500 companies are not all the same. Whittling it down, in our opinion, a concentrated roster could include no more than 50 names. That's our personal opinion. Other folks disagree and have their own models. That's what he and I own and believe in. That parent company of the textbooks and the rating agencies that everybody's trying to figure out how to beat has doubled, tripled, quadrupled the unbeatable index. But if you include none of those profits over outperforming three, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 years, probably the single biggest secret hiding in plain sight of all the debates, if I had to pick one in the stock market, if all you did was say, what's the mailbox math of the 50, the 10, now we're gonna use the most conservatively low, non-cherry picked example, it's a 7% annual mailbox math owning the parent company of the S&P that we all are talking about way too much. Throw all the models out, throw everybody's predictions out, get all your time back with a pencil in the back of an envelope, in my opinion. And I, I just wanna emphasize that what this does for anybody searching for their Freedom Day and planning for it and preparing for it is brings peace of mind stability check the box we made it now you're free to speculate live life enjoy the rest of whatever it is that you want to do but you're able to live on income that good old mailbox math and you don't have you don't have to worry and that, and that to me is so powerful and my favorite part of of what we do and the reason that we do it so if anybody has any oh, sorry no, and now you and now you know it took a few episodes. I give you all the the credit in the world for suggesting we do this. We wanted to share an open playbook. This is where the name came from. I give you all the credit. I'm I'm enjoying just providing a little color commentary of what I learned from that back in that belly of that beast to the next thirty years sharing it all with you. I look forward to making this more accessible, not more confusing. Confusion is a big business. Let's do the opposite so you can keep more of what you've worked so hard earning. And I do think it will unlock doors to go do more. Could not agree more. 
if anybody has any questions, wants to enlist the help of Ryan and I, the back of the envelope math, uh, any questions, reach out to us, team at freedomdaysolutions.com. And then as always, freedomdaysolutions.com is the website. Post some links in the show notes, and we'll see you next week. This show is brought to you by Freedom Day Solutions, LLC, a registered investment advisory firm advising individuals and families nationwide. Performance is not guaranteed and past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. To learn more, visit freedomdaysolutions.com. This show contains general information that is not suitable for everyone and was shared for informational purposes only. Any forward-looking statement or opinion expressed is subject to change without notice. Nothing contained herein constitutes investment, legal, tax, or other advice, nor is it to be relied on in making investment or other decisions. Clients of Freedom Day Solutions may hold positions in the securities discussed.